So hello and welcome to another Woodworking Wisdom. So today, we're going to do something a bit odd. We're going to make a bowl that's not round. How does that work? We're going to use a wood life, but we're going to do something a little bit different with it. So what we're aiming to do, let's get them in and have a look. A couple of little things we've been playing with. So this one looks quite round, but love the little details on here. Okay. But, all right. Maybe we want to do something longer. I've even worked out you could do something square with a bead. That could be spooky. So we'll have a play at some point. This one, a little bit of a split. So uh, this was play, bit of practice, bit, bit of ash. Just to have a go and see what was going to turn out. Depth of material plays a part in. If you're going to have a go at this, don't go getting your best wood out on the first one. All right, so have a practice bit a little bit. But hopefully you get an idea what we've got there. All right, so slightly different shapes. They will sit quite nice. You've obviously got some of they will rock on. I can either tilt it or rock it. We could even sand a little flat so it's got something to sit on nicely. Okay, so that's our aim. That looks quite round. That's quite good. I, I did well with that one. All right, so let's get our bit of wood in. So we're going to play with a piece of beach. We're going to bring that onto the lay bed. Let's just move things up a little bit. I've marked this out a little bit, drawn circles and stuff. Just having a look at what we've got. So centre dot, gently cut it out. Cool this drill. We need to just drill a, a pilot hole. We're going to use screw chuck, put this on the leg. We want screw chuck. We need chuck key. All right, so I'm just going to put this in. Now to make my life easier for what we're going to do, so I can stand more on the end of the leg, we're going to bring this up. So hopefully, let's have a quick look. Let's just move the light down. That's better. Just means I won't have to lean over as far. So let's tighten that up. Get our blank. Gonna put him on. So we're using the chuck key just to give us a little bit more leverage. Turn it up. Okay, just see where things are. Let's even just go a little bit. It'll pull it up squarer. Then we want just something to support it for a second. Here we get a bit sort of. Why would I do that? Add a bit more strength to what we're doing. Checking the handles are locked down either end. There we move the headstock. Next thing we need to check a little bit. Live speed. So we've got our dial box. Just bring our cable around a little bit. So we can move the dial box down the lathe if we want to. I'm going to bring the speed down right low. So then from there we can start, gently come up, more controllable. We want bowl gouge, so uh, half inch to start with. I'm going to roll it so I've got the flute actually facing me. Dead up right at the moment where my finger is. I can run it down there, make contact with the bevel, not cutting. Gently going to roll it over, and from there we're going to come across. All right, press the bevel. Gently going to rotate it. So I roll this round, find my shaving. Then from there we can push across. So make sure the shavings go down on the floor. Nearly down to this clean cylinder. Touch a little bit to go, look. Oh, that's better. Nice long, almost continuous shaving, just cutting off centre down to our cylinder there. Just so let's take the tail stock just back out of the way. Just going to bring the tool rest round. We've got set dividers I've set up for the chuck diameter. Just to give us a quick guide, I can use the centre point mark, scribe a hole, or scribe a mark, look. Just going to bring that back into play again. Yeah, okay, briefly, we want patching tool. Whilst I've got a little bit of access, I'm limiting my room here, but just going to do a part cut. 
In a second the tail stock's going to come right off the lathe, but for a minute still going to use it to add a bit more security. We're using that screw chuck, be worth having something just to hold it. We're going to do pull cut. So again, we're not resting the bubble with this. Pulling from centre outwards. Flute over on its side, 12 o'clock. We're probably over at about nine and a half, ten o'clock. Gently coming out. So we created our foot. That's our first bit with diameter. We've got to square it up a little bit in a minute and we're just taking the bulk off. Now we're going to start to build a bowl shape. So same gouge. Same cut. Pulling around the corner a bit. So at this stage we're not rushing the bubble again, we're just almost in reality that pull cut. I'm leaving step up here, we're going to actually do a bit more on that in a second. So from there, just going to come round, a little bit more. And something there, so I'm going to create a bead with this. Got the bulk of our shape done. Let's lose the tail stock now. This stage, we stop it. Let's have a quick look. A little bit ridgy not nice and clean let's cut it clean we're getting nice shavings but a bit ridgy we need to clean it up so we're going to take the gouge and we're going to rest the bevel properly now so we're going to work towards the foot to start with to give us a platform go turn it round that's the tip of the gouge gently pull round all the way that's not bad got a little line in there so rest the bevel drop the handle right back gently up there's our shaving again pick that up a little bit more trying to keep the shape flowing nicely weight wise i've got my right foot now i've got to shift my body weight back over to my left foot a little bit drive it round Just seeing what's going on here. I know the foot bit we're going to extend later. I'm going to trim my shape, but I'm almost one half a circle, a little bit flat through the middle here, so I'm just ironing that bit in. That bit. Good. Now we're going to do something up here. What can we have? Just to square that up a little bit. On the back edge, I'm going to round that round a little bit now. It's easier to get to at this stage. We're doing that drag cut like we did earlier, that pull cut. And something to make a little bit of a V with. So I'm using. Tip the skew chisel flat on the rest. We get into here. Wonder how far we can go. So we can extend our bead. Try and make a bead shape in here. Do the bulk. A little bit to get. So working on that bead using the skew to almost shear scraping for this. 
So that oval skew, got that curved body, help it glide along the rest. That's quite nice. Can do, and a few of you guys are gonna say, could we use different things? So carbide tip, all right, so easy woodcut tool. I've got the defining type tool with triangle tip. I just want to shape a little bit down here. I could have done this with the skew, but I'm trying to throw things in that few of you are going to say I don't have that could we use. We could even narrow this down a bit more. Looking at my shape of this bead bit, little triangle section I'm producing. Checking how it looks either side. Let's have a quick look. So at this stage, trying to see how this comes up. Does it look equal? Where do we go to? How deep is it? It's not bad. Does our bead flow? Okay. So that's the bulk of our shape down on the outside. We've got our foot. Last thing I better do with the foot, even though we've still got to do a little bit of sanding now. Let's square this up. just to get that more parallel. Other thing just gonna do, just wanna skim the bottom of this, make sure it's flat. This is gonna be reversed later. So I've not gone all the way across just enough. Give me something to seat on. The little lip I've generated here, just catching my fingernail. Again, we're gonna take off later and reverse it. So from here, we're gonna sand this up for our grades. So I'll bring the tool rest back a little bit, take that out to give more room, bring the extractor in. I'm going to put the air on, so let's get the abrasive first. Just that we're doing bowl work, probably going to start 100 grit. It will produce less heat, get rid of anything torn grain. I've got a little bit on the end here, get rid of it all quicker. So we've got our 100 and then we'll go up through the grades. So I'll put the extractor on. Gonna take the live speed down a bit. Last little bit we can do. A little bit burnishing. Do the shavings. I'm even then going to go back to the 400 grit. Let's use the back of it. Make sure we've got sanded up. Being careful with the end grain. Make sure we get all of that. That looks quite nice. No polish at this stage. Just gonna bring the tool rest in, help me take this off. Okay, we unwind. No space around the screw chat. We could have put a shim in between, but it's quite a deep bowl, so it won't hurt to have the lump. Take that out. Load the bowl. Just 
Check it runs through. A little bit of wobble. Move it about again. Try and get your finger pressure equal. Okay, that's better. Tighten it up. Come around the corner, let's lose the extraction nozzle a little bit. Into there. Checking our height. Back to that half inch gouge again. Going to work in the middle. Let's bring the control box down a little bit so I can reach it. Centre, got to come down just a tiny little bit. It's better. Then we can start hollowing. Finger with thumb, left hand. Bring the hand out wide, line up the bevel. Gently travel. Speed wise, we're about 1300 RPM at the moment. So as we can travel with the body movement on this. So out wide with the handle again. Change the grip. So from here, finger of thumb again, lining up where you want to start. Start to feel thick, they still got a bit to go. Have a quick look. Okay, so we're taking out some of my bulk, feeling in behind here with my fingers. Get a gauge, still a bit thick. Getting a bit of a lump in the middle forming. That's due to body movement. So if we start with the handle out wide, we're coming round. That's as far as I can get here without crashing my body. I can reposition, change my hand and move my feet about. So all those little things play a part in from here. That's as far as I can get. I've got to overhand, but then move round a little bit. So that's the hence the fact that we're getting that little lump now. Going on there, that feels good. So tip of the gouge again. Body movement moving as much as I can come round here. To go slowly without hit the brick wall. Do one more there, rubber measure next. Slightly finer cut meal. Middle, let's have a look. Now at this stage, the lump in the middle that we've left is creating a little bit of stability, a bit of strength down through the foot. Got to check our thickness, so we're going to go simple bowl caliper. Our workshop one, this has measuring scale up on here. So if I bring the two together, we have got ooh, nine mil there, bring it down, 12 mil further down. So this is really useful to get in behind the bead and be able to measure and see exactly what I've got all the way down for our bowl. So I can compare thicknesses. We want it to look pretty equal. At the moment we've still got a bit of material. Go back on, finger and thumb, come inside. Where's our angle? There. But, now we're thicker towards the base. Move that body round as much as I can. Arm movement and feet. One cut. There we now have seven. Coming down we're still thicker. So more out the base section then. Same thing, don't want any more off the rim. So 
find that cut. We're trying to get this nice and equal. Go back in. The scenario aspect of what we've got at the moment is good in the aspect it's thinner towards the top, not in the bottom. That will cause more vibration. Have a measure again. So you see we're trying, taking a cut, so six mil there, coming down we have, ooh, that's good there, Could take a little bit off of that, six, five there, six doing the bottom. So again we're refining those areas. That's good, so we're going to go from finger and thumb, overhand, Gonna bring the rest down just a tiny bit. Flute's almost about one o'clock. Almost quite all right. Twelve is there. Nibble this away. Rest the bevel. Found my angle. We can repeat it. We get lower and we're taking the bulk out. Let's bring the tool rest in. Cut down that overhang so we can rest the bevel again. Let's find our edge there. So all we're doing is guiding back on the bevel edge. Find our next cut. It's starting to blend into what we've already got now, so I can rest the bevel on the bit we've cut. Drive up, there's our wall we want to pick up. Find the next little bit. So rest the bevel, gently up with the handle. There's our shaving. Round to the middle, nice and controlled. Check what we have. So a little bit thicker still in the bottom, so we want a little bit more out there. Fingertips. Checking things the gouge can't. How that shape flows, what does it do? Slight like change of direction up there, so we're going to blend this in now. Checking our thickness again, what's happening. Thicker there, not bad there, tiny bit there, we're down a bit thinner. Just do a little bit in the base. Good fingertips now, how's the shape flow? What's going on? Thickness, that's better. Okay, I think we're done with the gouge on the inside. Gonna be lazy. Gotta dress this rim area up in here. I want this nice and flat. So, I'm gonna go with scraper. Nice and lightly. I can push back and forward using my thumb. Left hand. Okay. Need to check it is straight and flat. That looks pretty good. We're going to dress this a little bit in a minute, but we clean that up. Shape ways, not too bad. Got a little drop, tiny bit in the centre. Just check where we are there, make sure we've got enough. Light cut with the gouge. Just take the little bit of material 
before we drop to the middle. That's better. Then we go back to the sanding, so let's bring everything back in. Take the speed down. Back to the 120 grit. Bad. Let's do a quick clean up. Okay, good. So now, got to change the chuck. But let's have a quick look. I think you can probably see where we are in here. Got our bow, got our shape. Still doesn't look like what I've shown you, does it? Okay. So we'll get there in a minute. All right, so let's just change the chuck. We need that one off. Have the one behind you. And that might be too small again. How many which holes that's on, Steph? That three in, uh, that's all right, I'll go with this then. They're both the same. All right. This is, oh, shit. Might be enough. All right, so we've got a set of button jaws. See where these are. Just winding out. It's my number four, it's down there. Will it go, how about that? Check where things are, that's good. So we've got to do that base bit. Let's set things up. We've got to do something with the foot. Gives you an idea of thickness. We can actually use this a little bit in shape. Let's come down a tiny bit. Again, I've got to think of grain direction, which way we're cutting. Okay, tip of the gouge, drive around, trying to blend this in. That little step we left. Be nice and light as we're coming out. Refining that little step, that's not bad, comes together nicely. Little lump, just there. Quite good. We have that. I think we go just smaller bowl gouge for a second. Gonna bring the speed dial back up to here so I can get it.
nice being able to stand on the end of the lathe and there's a little bit more clearance. This we can make a bit more decorative. Let's see what we can do in the middle. Just losing tailstock centre mark from the ring centre. Define things just a tiny bit more. got just from feel a little bit of flat grain maybe that's on there that's quite good let's bring the air back on Back of the abrasive, if that cloth back works good. Almost cleaning that out. Last nice thing, you can add. A few little lines in there. That's more decoration than anything else. Next bit, whilst it's still held, we can set cut point up. So I'm putting things back together so our table that we use in the tailstock or in the banjo I'm going to line up the centre point that's the only reason I brought the tailstock back in to a pencil lock it off okay so literally lining up with the tailstock point for the pencil bit all right all that's going to allow me to do and let's have a quick look on our grain what we got and through there it's probably best. Now I'm looking at grind direction. We've got a big swirly bit coming around here. Look at where we want. We can even reposition things in the chuck. Not that that's going to matter too much. You might want to move things around a tiny bit. What about half? We go the other way. Looking at where our grind's going to line up with what we're going to do with this. I'm going to lock this off. So I've got spindle lock on here. If you've got one spindle lock that locks the spindle, take your chuck on and off. Again, you could lock that and reposition the bowl where you want to be. Let's just drop off the tail stock to give me more room again. Then we're going to bring this round. Just enough access that that's better. Clear the wood shavings. Now I'm looking at where we want to be half and half. So I think about there. Lock in the spindle now. So I can draw a pencil line up round. Go across the centre. We can come down the other side. And I might have to move things round banjo wise. But I can get in there. So same thing again. We can run the pencil flat. I've gone round pencil as well, it makes it easier. So I can draw our line down through. So smack on our halfway point.
let's lose the table. So at this stage, got one other task to do. So we've got our line, right, let's grab, I'm gonna want this. So what's this, this is a piece of abrasive paper, spray milk glue and something flat. Let's take our bowl out from there, mate, we'll put that on. Just to give us more room, we're gonna lose the button jaws on the chuck, to undo the spindle. So what's this about? We want to make sure the rim surface here, and we haven't sanded it, is nice and flat. And here. So actually, the other thing I'm doing, deliberately doing now, small pencil line. Just to go on there. I want to make sure that's dead flat that side, so we can use that sanding board. Just literally, there, let's lock it off a bit. Create a bit of a taper. Move it round. Hopefully we won't have to do too much. What we're trying to lose is our pencil line all the way round, make sure we get everything nice and flat. Still got a little bit. We can work either way. Keep your pressure nice and equal. Looking better. Tiny bit to do then. Just looking at what's going on, that looks good. Do one more. Good, right. So now, need to go cut it in half. So we're gonna cut up through on the band, so nice and gently down through. Quite a simple cut. Okay. So I'll cut it, bring it back, let you have a look. So we got our two halves, all right? So there was our bowl. Having cut it, we can now bring these to here. So now we've got to glue it. So some PVA. We want a tiny bit. So looking good glue brush, let's just make sure we've got no dust. Clean those off. Got dust on the edge there. Don't want the glue on that flat. So by sanding that on that sanding board, we get a nice flat surface. We don't want loads and loads of glue. So I can move it about gently. Bring it up. Got a little bit there, so cut it back. Then we've got to bring the two halves together. Now hopefully, pretty clean, I'm gonna just, let's turn the board over. I don't want all that dust. Could bring the two together for a minute. Just rub joint for a second now. I've got to flip them over. Got to start to line things up. Working on the suction that the rub joint's going to create. Checking how equal we are. I could do it coming round a little bit. Pushing equally. Playing with my fingertips now just on the centre here. See what's going on. Push. All right. Tricky bit to do this, but just to then almost got to leave it. Just seeing where things are. So having got our suction fit, let's just double check over here. Not too bad, I want to get a little bit of pressure on the top. Let me go with some spring clamps. One there. One on here. Got to be nice and gentle with these. Haven't got a lot to grip on. Let's just do one up on there as well. 
Okay. At that stage, gotta let it dry. Okay, so we're gonna let it go off hard. Hopefully it'll stick everything together. Those will pull it and just hold it. You don't wanna go moving it about too much. Next stage, we can then level the top. All right, so hopefully give it a couple of hours and then we'll level it back. Okay, let's have a quick look. So we've got our bowl, let's move our glue. So we stuck it together. We've got our shape a little bit, a little bit of cleaning up to do. We've got to clean the rim up. We've got to clean maybe a little bit on the inside. It does sit, we could sand a flat on here so it'll sit at an angle, that could be quite nice. Might look at that. Let's do the rim bit first. So we'll leave the board a minute, it'll steady it. We're gonna go chuck. Bring things back, create a little bit more room, but we'll lock off banjo. Just sander. And shut key, look. Speed the take down. We're going to bring air back in. Really important with this, quite a lot of dust on this bit, so it'll be good to have the extractor nice and close. That's pretty good. So we sanded our rim. I want to sand inside. All right, I'll show you why in a second. So let's show you and change things about. So take our chuck off. Gonna get a drill chuck. Nice and hard. And here, I've got a tiny little lip. So let's just have a look on the side camera thing. Just on here, I can feel a little step. Not much, but we could blend it in. It'd be nice if it was flush. So, power sanding pad, put that on. What have we got on there? 240, now, I'm gonna go with a 240, but I'm gonna do something a bit weird. I'm gonna go three inch disc on a two inch pad. So the outer edge won't cause a ring mark on the hollow. It all flex a bit. Okay, again, low speed, put the air back on. I can see where I'm going from here. I can have a little bit of speed. Better. I'm really working down that centre line. And right up. Again, be worth you have your dust mask and stuff for this. It's difficult to do the video, so we've got a good extractor in here pulling that away. Seeing what's going on, having a feel. So if you look at our disc, you can see how it's bent over nicely on here. I'm just going to change it. 240. Go back to a 400 now. See what's going on now, it's not too bad. A little bit clean up on there. Let's just lose the drill check. Okay, so 
so hopefully got our bowl a little bit inside look pretty good nice and clean through here now great way of cleaning up so everything feels splash you're going to get some figures of join line slightly i've got a little bit of a glue line a little bit annoying but it's the problem with doing recorded demos if you like you go with what's there we've got something that will sit on last thing you probably want to do a bit of 400 work around that internal soften and just to take that sharp arrow off you might want it sitting level i've done it so we've got a little bit of an angle so it'll sit shame it doesn't quite yeah that's better shows on there look okay so we can have it so it sits there you could have it if you want so it rocks are you ever going to use this all right so different shape it gives you something of a different shape obviously if you go with something deeper okay as in depth, length, and everything else, you can make something longer. You could do it so it comes down to a long point. So it tapers all the way down through. Depends on the depth of your bowl blank. Don't go too deep to start with because obviously it's going to be good practice just to have a play. Whole range of different ideas you can do with this, but it gives you that kind of, oh, how do you make that? That more intriguing, a little bit of detail on the end, nice shape down through here. Finish wise, whatever you want. You could go with spray. So you could lacquer it, you can go oil, all right? Whole range of different things have gone there. You might even want to do some decoration on the bead. So I thought about painting these black, doing a dot erosion, just to add a bit more mystery about how this is done. Okay, so slightly different bowl shape. All right, hopefully you've enjoyed, giving you something as a different idea of what you could do, a standard bowl, make it into something a bit more intriguing, something as a unique kind of shape. If you've enjoyed, thumbs up, share it, let us know, okay? We'd love to hear from you. We will see you again for more Woodworking Wisdom soon. Thank you very much. Bye then.